Welcome inside Coors Field as it is a beautiful Thursday night. Final four games before the All-Star break. Good to be home as the Rockies will take on the Philadelphia Phillies for the first time in 2016. And the West Texas kid making his way to the mound, Chad Bettis. Bettis will have the baseball tonight for the Rockies, making his 18th start of the season. And historically, he has pitched very, very well against Philadelphia. That's Odubel Herrera. He's a good looking young center fielder. He's got pop. He'll lead off for Pete McCannon's Philadelphia Phillies. Here's the rest of their lineup presented by Southwest Airlines. The veteran speedster Peter Borges will be in right field. He'll bat second. Cody Ashley will bat third. Michael Franco, he's homeward in his last four games. He'll be in the cleanup spot. Cameron Rupp, big, strong catcher with pop. Ryan Howard doesn't play that frequently anymore, but he's in the starting lineup tonight. Freddie Galvis at shortstop. Cesar Hernandez swinging it very well. He's batting eighth at second base. And Adam Morgan is making the start tonight for Philadelphia. Well, Chad Bettis started out the year great, and uh, more often than not, lately, he's run into some trouble. And tonight, he's uh, trying to give himself a boost going into that All-Star break. Yeah, he really has struggled of late. 4-2 to start off the season with a 4.18 ERA. The last eight starts, 2-4, and 8.24 ERA. To me, when you look at the pitch usage for him, he's not been using that curveball as much. Last year, he was using it nearly 15% of the time. You can see it's dropped down to 8%. That pitch is a very effective pitch for him. And he misses with the first pitch fastball at 92. So it's 1-0 on Herrera. Ten home runs at that leadoff spot. So he's a lot like Charlie Blackman. If you make a mistake, he can give you an early lead. It's out of that open stance. And that's a good pitch. Got in the kitchen. Trevor Story waiting around the second base bag. One out. Well, the last start for Chad Bettis against the Philadelphia Phillies was in Philadelphia and he took a no hitter into the eighth inning and you'll watch the highlights curve here ball, Spilly to your curve point it's curveball curveball curve and you see it and that's a pitch that I feel like Chad's gotten away from he does have a good fastball this year the changeup has been using that a little bit more he's fallen in love with the slider which is a great pitch but you always have to remember what allowed you to be successful and you saw the hit through the vacated spot on the left side the Rockies had shifted and that was why you saw the smile <laughs> on the face of Bettis, kind of the irony of it. One ball, one strike on Peter Borges. The Phillies won yesterday at home over Atlanta 4-3. to three. They swept the Braves. Again, they've won four straight, eight out of nine, ten out of 13. Borges did not have a hit yesterday. It snapped a 14-game hitting streak, but he begins perhaps another streak as he lines a single with one out to right field. Let's take a look at the gloves tonight for Colorado. Late night last night, the Rockies sure didn't get to bed till about 4.30 in the morning. Brandon Barnes, Charlie Blackman, Cargo in the outfield. It's Arenado Story, LeMahieu, and Mark Reynolds in the infield left to right. And Nick Hundley is doing the catching. Tony Walters caught last night. The Rockies fell 5-1 to one to San Francisco. The Giants took two out of three. Here's Cody Ashey. When he came up, he was a third baseman, and he pulls this down the line foul. And then they brought up Michael Franco, and he quickly became a left fielder. <laughs> Rightfully so. Michael Franco has been one of the better players in baseball of late. And you look at Cody Ashey, he spent 53 games on the disabled list to start off the season because he had an oblique strain. Oh one and there's that pitch you want to see him throw more the curveball and I'm fine with it even if it's not a strike it's just it's a pitch to change eye level it's a it's a pitch that changes a hitter's timing and the curveball even if it's not a strike like I'm mentioning you can throw fastballs above the belt after it and you'll get a lot of bad swings on pitches like that. Ashy chops it foul. One ball, two strikes. Philadelphia, we were discussing this in the open. They had the great start, won an abundance of one-run games. And then they they got derailed in June. They went six and twenty-six over a month period of time. And then since then they've won ten out of thirteen. 
And they actually come in with a slightly better record than the Rockies, 40 and 46. The Rockies are 38 and 46. Ground ball to second. Can the Rockies twist one? There's one and no th return throws. This was not hit hard enough. Two outs, and that'll bring up Michael Franco. I love in the notes for Philadelphia, they have a lot of glowing statistics concerning Franco. And it's uh, all under the heading Frank the Tank. <laughs> <laughs> he's built like a tank. He is. Well, and he's going streaky, and he has four home runs in the last four games. Home run each game. That pitch misses ball one. He will take a big cut. Franco, four for 26 in his career versus the Rockies, 154 batting average. Part of that faced Chad Bettis last year when he had that near no hitter. Ground ball to third. Nolan comes and gets it on the forehand, and that's the end of the inning. So a nice job by Chad Bettis. He gave up the hit to Borges with one out. They've got a couple of ground balls. We'll see that Rockies offense when we come back. Defensively, after a rough road trip, they went one and five, and in five of the six games, they scored one run or less. Charlie Blackman, though, he was good on the road trip, a 304 average, and he'll be followed in the Southwest batting order tonight for Walt Weiss by DJ. DJ LeMayhew, he hit 400 on the road trip. The rest of the lineup hit 139 on the road. Cargo had a couple hits yesterday, Trevor Story. Get him to the All-Star game. Text N5. I'll tell you more about that as the evening goes on. But this is the last night you can vote. So go to 89269 and text N5. You can also go to Rockies.com. Oh! Backslash vote to uh, help get Trevor to the All-Star game. First pitch from Captain Morgan's in there for a strike. Doesn't have the mustache. And a line shot caught by the shortstop, Freddie Galvis, who climbed the ladder one out. So he takes a knock away from Charlie. Uh, and the timing's so important for the shortstop, making sure you don't jump too early or too late. Galvis, a very sure-handed shortstop. Where's that number 13? In memory of Omar Vizquel, a kid from Venezuela. It's always nice when you get to represent person he looked up to in the major leagues. Well, here's the third leading hitter in the National League, D.J. LeMayhew. D.J. at 331. He trails only Daniel Murphy, another second baseman, and 
with Wilson Ramos. Couple of Nationals ahead of him. And set oh. the knees for a strike. It's one and one. Ron Culpa is going to bark balls and strikes tonight. Chris Conroy at first. Jerry Meals, the crew chief, he's at second. And Tom Woodring is at third base. Ground ball through the hole. Another base hit for DJ. Well, Adam Morgan got the start today because Aaron Nola is being pushed back, the young right-hander that they're trying to prevent getting too many innings pitched in, and Morgan's getting a spot start. His last win, Adam Morgan came back in May against Atlanta. Look at his numbers, and he's one of those extreme fly ball pitchers. Which is not what you want to be here. Fans of the Rockies score seven or more runs. Go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between four and six to get your Rockies taco special. Le Mans at Taco Bell. So one on for Nolan with one out. And this ball's hammered to left center field and deep, and it's going to kick off the wall on one hop. But around third, getting a green light is LeMayhew. The throw to the plate is cut off by Howard. one nothing Colorado. Good to be home, isn't it? <laughs> Nolan wasting no time and jumping on a pitch and just driving it into left center. DJ picking up and cutting the pillows. You can see this, this cut fastball just way over the plate. Nolan not missing the pitch. It is good to be home, Drew. Do that swing. That is RBI number 70. Is that any good before the break? You know what? If you look at the numbers of splits between this year and last year, nearly identical. It's 70 RBIs going into last year's All-Star break. Nolan leading the National League by six over fellow third baseman slash left fielder, Chris Bryant. So here's Cargo stepping up, looking for his first ribby since June the 28th. And he takes a strike. Cargo was the only guy to figure out Johnny Cueto, it seemed like, last night. He and DJ LeMayhew. LeMayhew had a couple of hits. Cargo had a couple of hits against Cueto. Cueto gave up only five singles. Pitched a complete game. Morgan's ahead 0-2. Cueto threw 118 pitches, 84 for strikes. His fourth complete game of the season that leads Major League Baseball. I enjoy watching Johnny Cueto, and even though it was against the Rockies and it was a great starting, I think you're gonna see more and more pitchers do what he does in changing up hitters' timings. Doing the Louis Tion, the shimmies, you're gonna see more and more because it's effective. Talk to the hitters in, it, in the Rockies clubhouse, they go, man, his stuff is good, but he just throws your timing off all the time. It's not a comfortable at bat. Morgan makes it an uncomfortable at bat for Carlos Gonzalez. He strikes him out on three pitches. I would think it's really difficult. We discussed this yesterday for the guys that, that lift, the guys that have a leg kick. Uh, because you don't know, is he going quick or, or is he turning his back on you? And that's why I was surprised Cargo did so well yesterday because that's a perfect type of guy. Cargo with the big leg kick, Johnny Cueto. But if you remember, a lot of those at bats came with Cueto in the stretch prevented him from being able to do all the shenanigans he likes to do on the mound. It's like when you can work in the word shenanigans. <laughs> Here's Trevor's story. I'd like to be up to some shenanigans tonight. Yeah. Some tomfoolery. Next home run will be his 20th. Slugging 530 in his first half season in the big leagues. Again, here's another reminder to get out the vote. He closed the gap considerably. He's running second right now to Brandon Bell. So again, 89269 and then N5. N9, N9, excuse me, 89269 and then N5. And it's really easy. Talking with Matt Stairs, that's a Philadelphia Phillies color analyst, and he was asking about Trevor Story, and I said he's awesome to watch, he's fun to watch. Larry Bo was asking about Trevor, and we were talking about the All-Star voting, and I said, you know what, of course, Field 
talk about that fence in right field. Trevor's hit about five balls off of that fence. Do you think 24 home runs puts him in the All-Star game? This is a high fly ball to fairly deep left field. He just missed it though. It's playable for Ashy. That'll end the inning. The Rockies do get a run. LeMahieu single followed by a Nolan Arenado double 70 ribbies for Arenado. One nothing Colorado as we go to the second. Colorado Rockies baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by the 2016 Toyota Tundra and your hometown Toyota stores. And by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Beautiful night. Plenty warm. Temperature in the upper 80s for first pitch tonight. The Rockies have a 1 0 lead as we go to the second. Drew Goodman, Ryan Spielborgs, Brad Thompson along in a little bit. And this is the big catcher, Cameron Ruff, who hits the ball about 14 feet. And Bettis takes his time and gets the out at first. first Speaking of big, one of the last vestiges of those great teams from a few years ago with Philadelphia, Ryan Howard, former National League MVP. And he's been relegated to real part time duty. He's getting a, a start tonight. But it may be his only start in the series. Well, you look at the year he's had and he's always been a high strikeout player. Obviously this year the numbers speak for themselves. There's no way to argue it against him. When you look at a guy like Tommy Joseph who ended up getting called up because Ryan Howard was struggling so bad at the plate. And I talked to Ryan about it. I was asking him about his May. He had 105 in the month of May. He said, "I the balls that I hit hard were out." Yeah, he just hit one out. That's three straight games that he's hit a home run at Coors Field. Last time he was here, he hit a home run. And the game before that, so Ryan Howard with his 12th home run, and it's a 1-1 ball game. Pete McCannon rolled the dice said, I'm going to put the big guy in the lineup because he's always hit the ball well here and it pays off early. Well, when you're the guy like Ryan Howard, you get a pitch up in the zone. With that power, he, that ball deserves to be hit out. You can see the super is super mode where that location is. Middle, middle, right where most guys like it. That has been an issue. For Chad Bettis, we've discussed it quite a bit. That's the 13th home run he's allowed this year. And Ryan Howard now tied with Todd Helton and oh. the late Hall of Famer Ralph Kiner for 78th on the all time home run list. It's a lot of home runs, a lot of trots around the bases. Inside on Freddie Galvis, two and one. Going back to Ryan Howard, the time I spent talking with him, I was asking him about that month of May. This ball's hit hard too. 
Cargo stabs it. Galvis going to try to run on Cargo's arm. Throw to second. Not going to get him. And it's a double. Cargo does a great job being able to stop this ball from getting past him. It's just Freddie Galvis thinking double right out the gate. And you can see Cargo's forced to have to throw this off his back foot. Not a lot of momentum moving towards second base, and Galvis would be able to slide in there safely. Finish your thought on Howard. Yeah. When it, whenever you have a guy like Ryan Howard and he's hit the ball hard and he's not getting the stats, I'm, I'm always curious, is it is there an injury? And I asked him, I said, how's the Achilles? He hurt his Achilles last game of the season in the playoffs. He said, no, that's fine. He was like, but you know how confidence is. He was like, you got to stay in there. And obviously, in this day and age, no matter what you've done, when you're not producing at the plate, there's always someone there to take your spot. And that's what Tommy Joseph did comes up, gets called up from the minor leagues, seven homers in 20 games, and that's it. That's a fair ball. Hernandez is out three unassisted as Reynolds touches the bag. Moving to third is Galvis. Two outs, and that'll bring up Adam Morgan, the pitcher. Well, I spent some time with him as well, and, and in talking to other people, around the Philadelphia Phillies. Ryan Howard has handled this as well as you can handle it. I mean, prideful guy. I mean, Ryan Howard's, again, a former National League MVP, part of two pennant winners, world championship team. You competed against him, you know, back when it Great seemed like guy. every postseason it was the Rockies and the Phillies. He's a tremendous guy, and he has been just uh, ideal in the clubhouse, despite the disappointment of, of not playing much anymore. 1-0 on Morgan. He pulls a shot. And Reynolds, great play by Mark Reynolds to save a run. The Phillies get even on the home run by Ryan Howard, his 12th of the year. It's 1-1, middle of two. Here's our office liquidator series storylines. Final line to get Trevor Story to the All-Star game. Make sure you vote N5. Getting offensive. The Rockies score a lot at home, but run prevention is going to be big also because they've given up a lot of runs at home. And Frank the Tank, Michael Franco, one of the hottest players in baseball coming in, a home run in the last four games for Philadelphia. And they're a hot club. Winners of eight of nine. We're at 1-1 as we go to the bottom of the second inning. Mark Reynolds, Nick Hundley, Brandon Barnes, six through eight in the lineup to face product from the University of Alabama, Adam Morgan. Morgan's a guy that's given up quite a few home runs also. 13 home runs in 62 and a third innings. I think that's a lot. 
Reynolds has been known to hit a few home runs. I like it. Oh, and one on Reynolds. As I'm watching Adam Morgan in the windup, reminds me does something similar to a Cliff Lee and how he turns his body and kind of hides the baseball. I was doing a little reading on uh, Adam Morgan. It's Billy. Uh huh. It says in his bio that he likes hunting, fishing, playing a little guitar. It sounds like the Luke Bryan song. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Former Rockies pitching coach in the minor leagues, Bob McClure, now works with the Philadelphia Phillies. And he's seen time with the Kansas City Royals and the Boston Red Sox. And Bob McClure, a former Rocky named Justin Hampson, McClure taught him a cutter. The cutter really, he said, hey, this cutter helped me get to the big league. Spent some time with the San Diego Padres. Well, he's taught the same cutter to Adam Morgan. And so far, we've seen a couple of them. And he said that that cutter is pretty much turned into a slider. But whenever you watch these guys and you have middle rotation, middle relievers, and you have somebody like Bob McClure, they're teaching you, you're in good hands. On the right field line and drifting foul. There aren't many pitchers in the big leagues now that don't throw a cutter. Lefties. You're talking about lefties? Especially lefties. Well, and more importantly is where the lefties are trying to locate that cutter. Where lefty, if he can throw the cutter inside, you're forcing the hitter to choose to pull the baseball. And if by doing that, you open the entire outside part of the, of the plate. This ball's in the air to deep right. Did Reynolds get enough of it? He did. Opposite field home run. And we told you Morgan will give up some home runs. The 14th, he's allowed the Rockies go back on top two to one on home run number nine from Mark Reynolds. We've seen Mark Reynolds use all fields this year. He's going to right field a lot more. And he's showing some pop, hitting the ball opposite field. More importantly, he's hitting that with two strikes, keeping his hands inside the baseball. Saw the cutter inside the pitch before, and he watched the fastball away, leaking. That ball is hammered to right field. Make that 14 home runs at 60, 62 in the third inning for Adam Morgan. Here's Nick Hunley. Two. So that home run for Reynolds is 246. It ties a guy we just saw in New York during the Yankees series. Longtime broadcaster now. Good switch hitting outfielder, Kenny Singleton. 221st on the all time list. Is exactly in miss, but it was exactly where Rupp wanted it. He wanted the ball up and in. Talk about that cutter. What, this time, uh, Galvis can't reach the baseball. He robbed Blackman earlier, but not Nick Hundley. So a base hit in front of Brandon Barnes. I said that's what Madison Bumgarner is doing like 50% of the time now, throwing that cutter to righties. And it's a great effective pitch if you can hit location. If you're missing location with the cutter, it ends up being a BP fastball out over the heart of the plate. You can see the sun is starting to creep into Ryan Howard's eyes and Nick Huntley. We'll see if the Phillies infield will skip a ball over to first. You know, the Rockies will do it. Nolan and Mark Reynolds have done it before. Barnes pushes a bunt. And 
just did get him at first. That'll be a sacrifice. Pitcher, number 35. That'll bring up pitcher Chad Bettis. Fans, you can join in on the conversation tonight and every night. Send us your thoughts, photos, questions via Twitter or Instagram. Use the hashtag Toy to Talk. We'll show some of your comments throughout the game. We always talk about run probability, and some of it depends on where you are in the lineup. But uh, you were having some fun with Twitter followers today on run probability. So with the one out and a runner at second base, you have a 30 this year. You have a 39.7 percent. We'll round up. We'll say 40 percent chance of scoring a run. Now it's probably diminished by where the Rockies are in the lineup right now. Sure, and that's why whenever you have these arguments and conversations, you have to understand. It's, what, hold, hold on one second. It's diminished even more by that swing. Yeah, and. Where are you trying to, why are you giving up an out? If you're giving up an out to move a runner a certain distance, is it setting you up in a better position for hitters to hit? Now, bunning to have a, a pitcher hit, it's probably not the greatest of plays, but in Brandon Barnes' defense, he wasn't sacrificing for Chad Pettis to hit. He was push bunning and didn't push bunt in the right location. He was bunning for a hit. And then you would hope that Chad Bet is first, second, nobody out, which is bunt. On the ground to second. Fernandez will throw to Howard. Two outs, and that'll bring up Blackman. Center fielder, number 19, Charlie Blackman. Since we're on that theme, we will tell you that with two outs and a runner at third, you have a 25.7% chance of scoring. I should never have made that little table for you. I'm going <laughs> to do this night on night the whole time. Night every night. I love it. And when it changes by a tenth of a point, I'm going to let everybody know. <laughs> we have Charlie Blackman, seventh in the National League with a 360 batting average with runners in scoring position. We know how good of an at-bat Charlie's going to give you. Every at-bat, every night. Many times he walks through that clubhouse, man, and he flips a switch, puts the game face on for about six, seven hours in everything he does oh. in the weight room, in his stretching routine, whatever meal he has. He's yep. got the game face on when he's watching video. Rocky's up two to one on the Reynolds home run, trying to add to it with two outs. And this is in the air to center field. Herrera's out there, he's got it. And that'll end the frame. But the Rockies get a home run from Mark Reynolds, his ninth of the year, he goes oppo. And it's two to one Colorado. As we go to the third in course field, first to four gets the Phils. Two to one on Philadelphia. 
And it'll be the top of the order for the Phils. Here's our quick and loans rocket arms. Highest first, first pitch strike percentage in the National League. We were talking about this stat yesterday because Johnny Cueto is near the top at 69%. Kershaw, who threw a little bit today, just played catch and is feeling much better. He's number one, Kyle Hendricks of Chicago. And on that list is Chad Bettis. My question for you, Ryan Spielborgs, is he throwing too many strikes? I, I do. I do think that some of the hitters are attacking him early. We look at the numbers and they prove it. 340 batting average, swinging at first pitch strikes off Chad Bettis. Tonight he's only two for nine in first pitch strikes, and I think that's important. You can still be throwing strikes, but you have to prove to the Phillies who are hunting fastballs and hunting for strikes that they can handle other pitches. Well, Herrera takes two pitches out of the zone. It's two and oh. Herrera tied for seventh in the National League and hits with 96. He's the lone Philadelphia All-Star. And first outfielder for the Philadelphia Phillies to be voted make an All-Star team since 2011 with Shane Victorino. Ryan Howard knows about All-Star games. Howard said Herrera is a superstar. He said about all, out of all the guys, has by far the most talent on the team. Can run. Hit, hit for power, throw, you name it, five tool type of player. It's hard to say five tool athlete now or five tool player because that's, there really aren't too many of those. Well, the guys that, that may possess five tools don't always he utilize them. Yeah. For instance, you know, Carlos Gonzalez was known as a five tool guy, but Cargo doesn't run anymore. Exactly. Two two and this is in the air to left field Barnes is out there and he's got it. I'll give you a guy that always they, they say has five tools. He really has four and that is Mike Trout. Trout doesn't have a great throwing arm but he can run. He's actually looking to run a little bit more. We know he can hit. We know he can hit for power. We know he can field. There are very few guys that truly no, I, bring all five tools. There really aren't and, and then maintain them for a long period of time. Exactly. Hard to do. Hard ground ball. Mark Reynolds hitting him over the wall like a vacuum at first. <laughs> Two gone. Nice play, Mark. One of the things Mark Reynolds does at first base, oftentimes you'll see him field the ball on his own and wave off the pitcher because he likes to prevent that extra throw. Likes taking it himself. We've already seen three foot races by Mark Reynolds in the last two innings. Plays that he's made over at first and oh. run him down. Just the seventh time this year that Cody Ashey's hit third in the lineup. Talking to Matt Stairs. There's on the Philadelphia curve. broadcast side, one and one. He thinks that Ashey. When he gets to play a full year, will be a 20 home run guy, especially playing in Philadelphia. This is a rollover. He's got to throw this one. That's a great inning for Chad Bettis. Quick and quiet, just like you like it. Middle of three, the Rockies lead two to one. Eight pitches for Chad Bettis that frame.
time now for the greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. It was announced earlier today, Carlos Gonzalez will compete in the home run derby at Petco Park. He's really honored to do this. It's a big thing for him. He did it originally in 2012. He had four home runs, not his greatest showing. He was a little bit nervous. He said the, the lights, the glamour, being in the All-Star game, it was something new to him. So he's got a new oh. method. Tom Runnels threw to him then, but he's not sure if he's going to throw to him now. Petco Park has got six career home runs, including two this se season. He also has 45 home runs since last year's All-Star break, as DJ does what he does best, single to right field. Guys, Cargo is a sure bet. Well, not sure, but close. He could win. He's got that sweet lefty swing. Yeah, I'm glad to see him in it again, Brad. It'll be a lot of fun. And we get to watch him every day take batting practice. And if he gets locked in on one of those rolls, he, he will put on a show. He will put on the show in the way that the new structure with it's not just 10 swings like it used to be. 10 swings, 10 outs. You get, I believe it's five minutes. And I think that for him, because he's a rhythm hitter. He's a guy, as soon as he gets locked in, bam, bam, bam. And I like the ability for these guys to take a step out, get a drink of water, do whatever they have to do, and then get their rapid fire oh. run going. Do you ever buy into that myth that he can throw a hitter off if, if you get in a home run derby? I was never a home run derby. I mean, yeah, you can you can get pull happy in, in batting practice and ruin your swing for a bit. But there's still three days after the home run derby to get right. Exactly. It's just an excuse. I mean, it, it's a long season, and the guy comes out of the gate, out of All Star break, and he's been hitting home runs prior. And he goes into All Star break and competes in the home run derby, doesn't do well, or he doesn't hit homers for a couple days. Hey, it was the All Star derby, the home run derby. There, there always has to be a reason why, right? Way yeah. inside. One and two. Nolan drove in the first run for the Rockies, a double to deep left center field. 70th run batted in for Arenado. Two to one, the Rockies lead. LeMayhew a leadoff single here in the third. And that's going to be a base hit. DJ will stop at second as Borges got to the baseball quickly. And they're two aboard. For the guy who's going to the home run derby and the All Star game, Cargo. This is from 2012. It does seem effortless, doesn't it? It really does. It goes really far. City, of course. Cargo swings and misses 0 and 1. Never seen Adam Morgan before, only Mark Reynolds had. Cargo a 349 lifetime average against Philadelphia. Remember in that 09 series, uh, he couldn't tough get him loss. Out. Yeah, he couldn't get him out. He was 10 for 17. That was his coming out party. There's one on the first. They won't double him up. So it's first and third, one out. Spilly, according to my chart, first and third with one out, you're going to score 63.4 percent of the time. All right, so let's expect a run right here from Trevor Story. These are situations, I love baseball when you're able to score runs without having to get a hit. You have a, sit, you have a situation, first and second, nobody out. Cargo doesn't get a hit, but you move DJ to third base, first and third on the corners, now a sack fly. And we know how well Trevor Story runs. Pretty hard to double him up last night, the fielder's choice. Bang Bang play in San Francisco for the Rockies only run. Oh. Adam Adovino tweeting out, please vote for our guy. Trevor Story in the final NL final vote. N5.
one and one on Trevor Story. Swung on a miss, one and two. Cut down on the swing here, get it in play, get a run. Worked out yesterday, we were talking about Story's such a difficult guy to double up that even if he hits it on the ground, chances are you're going to get a run haul. Unless he hits a rocket at somebody. Some kind of athlete. Stayed off that. Two and two. I always like it when we you see the tweet from Adam Ottavino when your teammates get involved trying to get you to the All-Star game. A great story in Arizona, even though it's Jake Lamb and we're hoping Trevor Story. Paul Goldschmidt started a Twitter account to get involved. Really? That's as anti- Paul Goldschmidt as he could possibly be. That guy does not like any of that outside stuff. He's focused on baseball and his family and his newborn child. So for a teammate to go out there and do something out of his comfort zone shows how much the All-Star game means to these players. 3-2, take a good look. You won't see this one for long. Three-run Jack for the hopeful All-Star. Trevor Story, number 20. Yeah, number 20, text N5 to 89269 or go to Rockies.com to vote. It's hashtag story time. Number 20 for Trevor Story. I don't yeah. think we need to say much. No, here's what I want to do though, because. Oh, I know what you're going to uh, do. Because, do I need to move the mic? No, um, yeah, you do need. No, 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 you don't need to move the mic. This is really important because we have to get out the vote. It's five to one, Colorado. I'm having trouble uh, with kindergarten here oh. peeling this thing off. Yeah. I gotta peel this thing off. Oh, I got it. Right, here we go. Here we go. It took you way too long to set it this one up. See, here we go. You know this is gonna stick to my eyebrows. Yeah, there you go. 5-1 as Story hits his 20th of the year. That's a nice round figure. He has 54 ribbies now. Well, you see on the Super Supermo spinning slider just hanging right there. Trevor Story, number 20. Take a look, admire that one. Hashtag story time. Don't forget, text N5 to 89269. Let's go. Get him in there. Let's see how that looks on you. This is how I, every now and then I go to the groomers. Um, and they don't use a bumper sticker to fix my eyebrows up. They use. Yeah. If I pull this, this will, that would really hurt. It'd be awesome. I mean, like, awesome. Well, I gotta make sure that my eyebrows are well, okay. Well, if let me put. Hold on a sec. If I push right here, it gets rid of your unibrow when I pull <laughs> this off. Yeah, exactly. Stop it. it. <laughs> You know, Brandon Barnes said if the Rockies and the fans get Trevor Story into the All-Star game, he would get a tattoo. This ball is well struck by Huntley. It's a gap it's going to roll to the wall. Extra bags for Nick Huntley. A double to go with an earlier single. Rockies getting after Captain Morgan. Eight hits now in two and two-thirds. So Brandon Barnes offered, as he was filming a little video for Trevor Story today on uh, Rockies.com. They said after, he said, hey, you guys get him into the All-Star game. I will tattoo N5 to his belly. Who said that? Brandon Barnes. Barnes, Bar you do it. Exactly. Yeah. I'd like to see it. And for Barnes, it'd be like his 247th tattoo. So it's like going to a museum. That one would be funny, though, when you're explaining it to your kids years and years from now. Why, what's the N5 on your stomach for? It was the number you had to 
Down the line foul. Well, Parra, Parra is one of the great politicians that the Rockies have ever had in their clubhouse. He got the vote for vote par for president t-shirt going everybody wore it throughout spring training heck people the, the players still wear it most of the time in the clubhouse Walt never <laughs> is anywhere without his par for president t-shirt on and now uh, vote for story He's one home run shy Tying the National League rookie home run record prior to the break. Barnes goes down. In the inning, the Rockies score three times on the three run home run from Trevor Story. Do it quick. Rip it off quick. No, no, because voting doesn't end for a while. You got to wear oh, it until the voting goes. Ow! <laughs> Root Sports is brought to you by Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. By CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Jack in the Box, it's back. The Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack. Taste it before it's gone at Jack in the Box. Rockies have scored in each of the first three frames. Trevor Story just did a three-run home run. Mark Reynolds has a home run tonight. Five to one, Colorado. Text N5 to 89269. Chad Bettis in the fourth inning. You'll see Michael Franco, Cameron Rupp, and Ryan Howard. And this ball is ripped to right center field, and Franco is going to have himself a double. Uh -oh. Better hustle. Well, he tripped at around first base. He almost was a yard sale halfway from first to second base. And everything Franco does. Talking to some of the Phillies guys and the coaches, he does everything big. He swings hard, plays hard. He throws the ball. He throws hard. You can see as he's rounding first base, he almost trips hard. Look out! He's a puppy too. He's 23. Good young players, man. Some very good young players. Really, really freakishly talented young players. Cameron Rupp's a product of the University of Texas, and he takes oh. a strike. So West Texas battling Central Texas here. It's a Big 12 matchup. The Red Raiders and the Longhorns. Rupp leads all National League catchers with 17 doubles. We talk about Ryan Howard not playing as much. You have the young Tommy Joseph, Carlos Ruiz. Did he go? Yes, he did. They checked it out with Chris Conroy. So 
One one pitch swings in favor of Chad Bettis one and two. It happens and you, you watch the changing of the guard with everything you watch it in, in all sports and you always mention father time never loses. Unbeat. Strike three on the inside corner. Rupp's gone. First out of the inning it'll bring up Ryan Howard who homered in his first at bat. That was a great sequence of pitches for Chad Bettis right there making sure he started off fastball away slider down and then coming back inside what we call doubling up. Your fastball in and then backed it up with another one and got the call. Ron Culpa. Ryan Howard's batting practice pregame is unique in that he will use at times he'll use a donut on the end of his bat. Other times he'll use the hitting jacket which slides down around the label and it actually is designed to take batting practice with it and there's more weight in your hands you know helps with bat speed strength in the hands wrist that sort of thing this is going to be punched through the left side it's going to score a run Franco's going to come in easily and both runs now batted in by Ryan Howard so he hit one over the wall and, and then he hit the uh, look like a, a volley at the net you see the location for Chad Bettis this one's fine Chad it's a good change up sinking away from Ryan Howard but the big six foot five lefty it's a lot of plate coverage the ball exit velocity off that swing was probably what 43 miles an hour I think it was that hard Probably less. Five to two. Bring up Freddie Galvis. But you've watched Howard do that. It was 70 miles an hour according to our stats cast. Oh. Galvis hitting 221. It'll surprise you. He'll hit the ball over the fence once in a while. He did yesterday. That was the difference in the game as the Phils. Beat Atlanta four to three. In the last 15 games, the Phillies have averaged almost six runs an outing. And they've hit at a 315 clip. Yeah, it's still odd to, to look over and see Philadelphia. And not see so many of the guys that were just fixtures. There's one on the first. They've got a duck, double play. That's a great turn. Mark Brown's having a great game defensively. Good feed, 3 6 3 on the turn. Franco doubled. Ryan Howard singled him home. It's 5 to 2.
back. Rockies are up 5-2 to two with the Trevor Story 20th home run. Fireworks already. Firework games are tomorrow and Saturday, and a limited number of tickets are still available. Go to rockies.com slash fireworks. How do they do that root sport stuff? Well, um, there's a special company that makes, and, and it, can, it can't be longer than six letters. Um, so obviously, root being four letters, it works out. And it takes a while. It, we have to put our, from what I understand, Talking to David Woodman, our general manager, yep. we put the order in like five years ago. <laughs> Can I get Spilly put on there for the fireworks? No, because it's seven letters. Story? Story works. And five works. I like it. Bettis is gone. Blackman line out and a fly ball to center field with one out. I was saying a moment ago that when you look over at Philadelphia's dugout, you don't see Charlie Manuel anymore. We haven't seen Charlie for a while oh. in the dugout. But, you know, no Jay Rolls, no Jay Sutley. Ryan Howard's still there. Chooch is still there. But neither one of those guys starts anymore. No Cole Sh Hamels. No Cole Shane Victorino. I mean, they, they and it, of course, they had Doc Holliday out of Arvada West. I mean, they had some players. They now. had some great players. And you look at look at that roster he had several hundred million dollar players on that team Jason Wirth went to the Washington Nationals Aaron Rowan center fielder ended up signing a big contract with the Giants Cole Hamels has had a large contract Ryan Howard signs a large contract Chase Hubley over his career has made a lot Jimmy, I mean that that was a fantastic group group of guys that they had. Yeah, and Spill, you competed a ton against them, and the Rockies saw them in the 07 playoffs, swept them. They saw them in 09 as Blackman loses that battle two outs. A tough game four loss for the Rockies. It looked like uh, heading back east to, for a game five. It was going to be Cole Hamels and Ubaldo Jimenez. And I know that it, to this day it pain. It, 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 it pain, if, if it pains me, it's really got to pain you. That one hurts. That one hurts so bad because here you are in the ninth inning, and Houston Street's on the mound are a great closer and just didn't have it that night to be able to get out of the ninth inning. The Phillies were able to oh. score, take the lead, and that was it. DJ's two for two. Yeah, I, I, it was just, it was, it was like the old line about a roller coaster of emotions. It was... Holy smokes, you know, we're, we're going to get on plane tonight and go back to Philadelphia. It was reminiscent of, of the game 163. Exactly. I mean, exactly. it was going to be the same scenario. Well, and the, the way it's set up for, for our team in 2009 was we knew we could beat Cole Hamels. We had his number. And Ubaldo, we all know what Ubaldo was capable of doing. So the only guys left, think about this, Billy, the only guys left. Philadelphia's 0-9 team, Orion Howard and, and Chooch, Carlos Ruiz. For the Rockies, it's Cargo and Jorge De La Rosa. And you up here. And Corey. Yeah. Cargo again, what a monster. See, that was his coming out party. 10 for 17. That's where he kind of gave a foreshadowing of what was to come. He was not going to be a leadoff hitter for long. He no. was going to move into the middle of the order. And the next year, he ends up winning a batting title. And it, and it was a great foreshadowing. You're, you're absolutely right. 0-2. From, from my standpoint, it was, it, was, it was just so much fun because you had the utmost respect for Philadelphia. You know they have great fans. And I'll never, ever forget the 07 series when you guys went in there and I mean it was Philadelphia they were like the Rockies who, who are these guys and win the first game and then when Cavs hits the the ball out all of a sudden Philadelphia fans are going holy smoke what is going on well the, well, the best part was Jimmy Rollins had a quote before the series even started when you talk about what we say uh, locker room or or bulletin board material Jimmy Rollins, before it even started, gave it to us. He said, we're the better team. We go, what? OK. It's on. It's on. Well, and that 2009 Philadelphia Phillies team ended up winning the World Series. And I know a lot of us 
the 08 team, and we knew looking at that during 09 that we were like, hey, if Phillies win in 08, we beat them in 09, we can win the World Series. Yeah. And, and, and listen, Philadelphia fans never satisfied. You gotta love them for that. But that five-year run, they they won the division five times. They won two pennants, and as you said, they won the 08 World Series. This is bounced almost over the head of Morgan because he was able to reach up. Takes an infield hit from LeMayhew. It's a one, two, three, fourth inning. Five to Colorado as we go to the fifth. Game recap. It's a happy recap thus far. The Rockies scored five times in the first three frames. We're up five to two on the Ryan Howard led Phillies. That's right. Howard a solo home run and an RBI single. The Rockies got a three run home run from the hopefully soon to be all star Trevor Story. Text M5 to 89 269. Mark Reynolds also a solo home run. It's 8 9 and 1 against Bettis. In the fifth inning, Cesar Fernandez hit a ground ball to first. I expect to see a bunt at some point during the game as Cesar Hernandez leads the National League in Major League Baseball in infield bunts, bunt hits. He's hitting 412 over his last 21 games. You know who helped him out a lot? No. Hensley Mullins. Bam. Bam Bam. I said, wait a second. Bam Bam's the hitting coach for the, the San Giants. Francisco Giants. Played for him in winter ball. And he said, dude, you're swinging too hard. He goes to 80%. Seriously, 80%. And, and it's Hernandez has really helped him out. His 341 batting average on the road, sixth in the National League. And when he can run, you have those infield hits. It doesn't matter where you play. Two on Hernandez. And what a play by LeMayhew. And he got him at first. That is a great play. Not a good play, a great play. Not only coming up with the baseball, but from his knees, he had to throw out a guy who could fly out of the left side of the box. Well, I need to talk about DJ being hurt last week with the knee injury, and you see him go down on the knee again. Gets back up on his feet, not even on his feet, from his knees and makes that throw. See him just using his body. It's not a better second baseman in baseball. Unbelievable play. Here's Adam Morgan. Hard his first time up. He had a shot right at Mark Reynolds. We always 
like some advanced metrics. DJ, the range factor slash nine, 5.19. That leads the National League. And that adds putouts plus assists per nine innings. Better strikes out, Morgan. Let's check in with Brad Thompson. Brad, how's it going? Guys, you've been reminiscing about the 2007 season on this date, July 7th, 2007. Philly went deep off Jamie Moyer, a two-run shot in the fifth inning. He had a big day, batted leadoff, was three for four, three RBIs. That home run, the Rockies won six to three, part of their fifth straight win. Spilly, how well do you remember that? I don't, and that's why I had you guys queue up the video. I, mean, I love watching We're gonna it. show every one of your home runs before the end of the year. How about that? Is that a big swing? Can you guys see some of the hairs on this thing from when I ripped it off? Yeah, Can but you don't have the unibrow it? anymore. It's like you went to a you went to a, your a favorite salon. your favorite waxing place here this one. <laughs> Ow! Should we wax your head some more or no? No, look, I already did mine. That's why. <laughs> this happened a few years ago. I think we were who were we trying to get we were trying to get more no in. And I put the thing on the top of my head. I haven't had hair since then. Back story time. Five two. The Rockies leading. This is Herrera at the plate with a two strike count. Pop to short and a fly ball to left. I want to see Trevor's story there, number one, because because it, it, it would be a great story. He deserves it. And it's not to say the other four guys aren't deserving. The other thing is, I think everybody in America thinks, well, it'll be Brandon Bell He's playing for the Giants, big market team. Let's get together. And show them how we support our Rockies here in the Rocky Mountain region. Let's get it done. And all stats aside, I've said this numerous times in the pregame, postgame this week. There's not been a rookie that has dealt with more scrutiny than that kid right there. Dealing with the Jose Reyes drama he had to deal with during spring training once he got released. Then he also had to deal with Tulowitzki's return to Coors Field. The guys had to deal with everything off the field and has just handled it with such professionalism as a rookie. Yep, he's got a slow heartbeat. Two and two. Somebody hit me up on Twitter yesterday and said, what college did the Rockies draft Trevor Story out of? I said, the college known as uh, Irving High School in Irving, Texas. Right out of high school. He would have gone to Texas A&M if he had the chance. He's going to be an Aggie. Another guy that might have been a Texas Aggie was a Clayton Kershaw. Swung on and missed. Bettis works a one, two, three, fifth inning. Rockies in front five to two. And when we go to the bottom of the fifth, it'll be Arenado, Gonzalez, and Story.
Here's this week's CenturyLink High Speed Challenge question. We want to know who reached 40 home runs faster last year. Was it Nolan or Cargo? Go to at root sports underscore RM to vote. We'll see them both this inning and story time also. Sixty one home runs between the three hitters you're going to see here in the fifth inning. Seventy percent say Nolan got there first. Thirty percent say it was Cargo. Here's the one oh to Nolan. He takes that low two and oh. Arenado an RBI double in the first booming double to deep left center and then he singled to right center in the third. That 2 0 fastball and got the 2 0 changeup. Nolan has been a picture of consistency. 2014, he had 287. 2015, he had 287. This year, he's sitting on 291. He's going to be a 300 hitter. The on base percentage, which is so important, has gone up this year because Nolan's walking a lot more. Oh, I think. More and more people are respecting the fact that he's not just a course field creation. He goes on the road and he hits the ball out of the ballpark. Just like Trevor Story, he goes on the road, he has 11 home runs this season on the road. More, more, and more, more and more people get to watch Noel, the more they realize this guy is legit. Ground ball to the left side, and Galvis is going to throw out Nolan. First time they've gotten him out tonight. Well, he's hit more home runs on the road than he has at home since the start of 2015. Cargo tonight is 0 for 2. He did reach on a fielder's choice in the third and came around on the story home run. Rockies have won four consecutive games against Philadelphia, 11 and 9 against them their last 20 encounters. Ball is gathered in by Galvis. Two outs. Let's take a look at our Mako big hit. Any guesses? Trevor Story. Trevor Story's last at bat. Deep in the count. And he swats one up on the concourse. A three run jack for Story. Anybody want a baseball with your burger at the health check? <laughs> Burger, fries, Trevor Story home run, chocolate shake. That's low. So home runs in the National League by a rookie prior to the All-Star break. King Kong, Dave Kingman, hit 21 and 72. And Albert Pujols matched it in 2001. And Trevor tags one to deep left. Did he just match it? Yes, he did. You want to talk about putting on a campaign? Pretty good stump speech right there. <laughs> He's campaigning around the bases right now with the second home run. That's number 21. You want to vote for him? Let's go. Text N5 to 89269. It's hashtag story time. Somebody put an N5. Take the 2 7 off his back for a night. Put N5 on his back. Unbelievable. Got him earlier with the slider down and in. Here's a fastball that Morgan tries to sneak past Trevor. Said, nah, -uh, story time. That's to the big, big part of course field. You're talking National League history now. 21 home runs prior to the All Star break. And for all those. 
people back east that are saying, well, it's Coors Field, yada, yada, yada. You know, I love going on the soapbox about this. With the two home runs tonight at Coors Field, he now has 10 Coors Field home runs and 11 out on the road. So hold your horses. The guy's got big time thump. And he plays shortstop. And he plays it well. I mean, everything that you want to talk about, clicking off the boxes, it's your rookie campaign. And like I mentioned earlier, the scrutiny that this kid has gone through, that no rookie in baseball has had to deal with the same stuff that Trevor Story has. And things that he had no control over. It was other players. And then to go and perform and play in this airtight defense that is the Rockies infield. Gold Glover to your left, the Gold Glover to your right. But no middle infielder has ever won the final vote. Because seemingly he's unaffected by all the things that you enumerated earlier. Tulo being here, coming back. The Jose Reyes situation. All of those things. I bet she goes out and he's going to hit another one at least before the end of the weekend. Field, top of the six, six to two, Rockies in front. Time for the timeless moment brought to you by Coors Banquet. The All-Star Game 1998 here at Coors Field. It was the highest scoring game in All-Star Game history with a record 21 combined runs. The AL won at 13-8. Rockies manager Walt Weiss, as a member of the Braves, was a part of it. In the bottom of the fourth, he had an RBI single to right field. Some interesting facts, Roberto Alomar, won that one, won the MVP with that one, hit a home run, stole five bases in that game. And the winning pitcher, Drew and Ryan, I think you might know him, his name's Bartolo Colon. It's incredible, he's still pitching now. That Bartolo Colon, huh, Brad? That Bartolo Colon. You know, Colon, I saw a stat, Brad, today. Colon in his last, I don't know what it is, 10, 11, 12 starts, he hasn't given up more two runs in any of them. Uh, are you gonna be disappointed when I tell you he gave up a bunch of runs tonight. Did he get hit around tonight? Four and two thirds, gave up six earned runs. He jinxed him. Oh. Well, it had to end at some point. Peter Borges at the plate, one for two. He's hit 15 of his last 16. Son of a scout. Borges fouls that one off. This kid's made himself a solid hitter. He got to the big leagues because he could defend and he can really, really run. Came up with the Angels. Remember they had they had Trout when he first came up at Borges out there. You couldn't find an empty space of grass there in wasn't baseball. One. No, there wasn't. With Ga was Garrett and your girlfriend was Garrett Anderson still out there? Garrett said, "Listen, I'll cover the 15 feet from where I am to the foul line. You all got the rest." I don't think so. I think Trumbo is in left field. Was so. Trumbo there? Yeah, there? Tr similar guy though. It's in the air. You guys got it. You got it. 
Ward just hits this one that's going to hang up hopefully for Charlie to get there and he will. Well, Bill, you played a lot of center field. Corey played a lot of center field. There's so much wear and tear playing center field to course field on your legs, I imagine. It, it is really difficult, and it's why you have to take care of your, your body when you go off the field. You, you look at these guys, they spend at least an hour after every game at night at course field going in the ice bath, making sure they eat properly, they drink enough water, they hydrate. Many of you guys, you've, been, you've lived in Colorado for a long time, and you know the difference just going to sea level and coming coming back home what it feels like. Cody Ashy grounds to Story, two outs. Get on-demand access to the best rooftop bar in Denver with the Rockies Rooftop Fan Pass. You choose the games and redeem from your phone. So Brad was telling the story about you know the 98 All-Star game here. Bartolo Colon. It was it was eight straight. I, I exaggerate a little bit. I was he, in high school. That was my senior year of high school, and Bartolo's still playing. It was my junior year of high school. <laughs> That's a long time ago. <laughs> Mike, what are you laughing about? Michael Franco, one for two. I think when you put it in that perspective, I mean, that's... Can I tell you a funny story about that yeah. All-Star game? So, I was doing a... Um, Hunley was at that All-Star game, by the way, right? Yeah, as a, as a kid, with, I think he went with his dad. And here's Franco's 1-0. That's up the middle and a base hit. So, I was doing a, uh, a pre-All-Star game some sort of special on Fox, and, and I was working with Steve Lyon, Psycho. We just saw Psycho in Boston. And we walk into the game, and they give us, everybody walks in, you know, we had our press credentials. Sure. We walk in, everybody got a Beanie Baby, the all-star Beanie Baby. And I said, I, I had a baby at home. I, Chris had just had Jacob, and literally he's three months old, no, two months old. And I said, nah, I mean, what do I want with a Beanie Baby, right? So I said, no, you know, give it to the next person or whatever. Those Beanie Babies, like 24 hours later, were being sold for $1,500. Yeah. Yeah, don't move. Well, sometimes you make mistakes. Yeah. Are you old enough to remember the Beanie Baby craze? So Beanie Baby was invented by Ty Warner. Ty Warner is in Santa Barbara, has a house in Santa Barbara. Everything is like, not six degrees, but three degrees At of separation least. between... Yeah, well, the story in Santa Barbara. Yep. So, yes, of course I know about being Babe. You helped, you helped him his house in Montecito. You helped him get a nice house. And uh, it's I'm really sure, nice. I'm sure it's really nice. It's really nice. Do we, we really don't call it a house, do we? No, it's a gigantic mansion. Well, one ball, one strike on Cameron Rupp. 0 for 2, two outs. Bettis is settled in. Two gone in the sixth inning. And Jack gets a swing and a miss. One and two. Just 71 pitches in for Bettis. Rockies up six to two. Great pitch. Rough chases. Franco left at first. And quietly, Chad Bettis is having a nice night and after giving up a couple runs early. It's six to two Rockies, middle of six.
Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Rockies trying to improve to 19 and 20 at home. First of four against the Phils in front of the All-Star break. 2016, another gorgeous night in lower downtown Denver. And the veteran setup man, David Hernandez, is going to get called upon here in the sixth inning in relief of Adam Morgan. It'll be the 41st inning thrown for Hernandez. This is Nick Hundley will lead it off. Nick's had a nice night. Single and a double. Brandon Barnes, Chad Bettis in the bottom of the sixth for the Rockies. Hernandez still has a good arm. You know what's interesting about David Hernandez, the former Oriole, and Rocky saw him a lot when he was with the Diamondbacks. He's one of only five guys for Philadelphia. We'll talk about a makeup, a, a turnover on your roster, a makeover on your roster. Only five guys make over a million dollars for Philadelphia. He's one of them. He makes 3.9. Ryan Howard. Makes 25 million in his. This will be his last year. He has a 10 million dollar buyout for next year. You know what happens a lot of times in sports? You pay guys in arrears for what what they've done. But there's a lot of youth on this Philadelphia team. They've been out of the postseason the last four years. But when I saw that figure, when I was looking at their the composition of their roster, I was like, wow, that's a small number in this day and age. And I think when they signed David Hernandez, they were expecting him to be a closer as well. And a Genmar Gomez, one of my former teammates back with the Indians in 2012, has taken over as their closer. So you look at the number and you go, hey, why is this guy making so much pitching in the sixth inning? Well, you had somebody else, a young guy, come and earn a spot, earn his job, earn that same spot. 2-2. He gets him on a slider. The line on Morgan, five innings. He gave up six runs, all of earned nine hits. Cut three home runs, two by Story, one by Reynolds. Didn't walk anybody. He struck out four, 84 darts. There's Brandon Barnes, a sack bunt, a strikeout for Barnes. Yeah, that's right. Keep voting. Brandon Barnes will have a new tattoo on his stomach. I mean, there's there's two great reasons. Number one, one A, Trevor Story needs to be in the All-Star game. One B, I wouldn't say it's reason number two. One B is to see another tattoo on Brandon oh. Barnes. Body is a, a work of art. Except for this one tattoo that I got right here. One and two. Next four series, Spilly, for the Rockies. Philadelphia, obviously, for four games. The team has been up and down this year. You go to Atlanta for three, just a three game road trip after the All Star break. Atlanta's. You know, with all due respect, they're, they're not a good team. Not a good they're team. a team in transition, a lot of young players. Then Tampa Bay, they're currently playing at a 405 winning percentage, struggling this year in the cellar of the AL East. They may and not have, have the same starting rotation by the time the Rockies go. That's all with the trade deadline coming up. Yeah, possibility. And, and then you play Atlanta again. And I know, listen, those other teams are probably looking at the Rockies and say, well, the Rockies right now are below 500. This is a chance for, the, for their team to get some victories. But the Rockies have better talent than those three teams. And you, they're still major leaguers. You know that. Still major leaguers, but... But, but you got to make some hay. You have to. Especially because I think if you... And we know this because we talk to the players all the time. To a man in there, they feel like they've left a number of wins on the table in the first half. They don't feel like they're a team that should be anywhere near eight games below 500 right now. So it's a chance to to right the ship with this series, and then the first three series immediately after the All Star break. I 
I think whenever you, you get in those stretches, and, and the Rockies during that stretch, that's a sixth lowest win percentage by a group of teams in baseball. So it would be the sixth easiest record for the guys to go on and take on. You still have to play the team like they're the best team in the world. Whoever you're playing, you have to respect that. Trevor time as you uh, look at our Cooney Lexus look back. Story's hit a couple home runs this evening. A three run shot, a solo shot. It's like a solo campaign. Good. A quiet campaign. Yeah. He's gonna let he's gonna let his bat do the talking. Speak quietly and carry a big C two seventy one. Exactly. Cranking out the boats right now. This ball's gonna go to DJ. Is he gonna throw him out? Oh yes. my goodness. Wow. That is also the 18th time this year that Ryan Howard has grounded out to the short fielder. Because everybody shifts on him. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a lot more hits in there for Ryan Howard just based on the shifts, but look at how far out DJ LeMayhew is. This is the normal spot that second basemen get it. That's from right center field. Thank you, says Chad Bettis. That's awesome. Hey, what? The right side of the infield, not a surprise because they've played so well all oh. year. But Mark Reynolds has flashed leather tonight. DJ always is flashing leather. What knee injury. Well, and DJ does have a chance to be an all star potentially. Matt Carpenter with an oblique injury, and there's there might be a spot. Well, uh, Ledmus Diaz, Diaz already, took it. already was uh, named another Cardinal and, and deserving. I mean, and he's a great story, a kid that you know was he was he was cut a year ago, let go, and then with the injury to Johnny Peralta, he gets an opportunity and he puts together an All-Star first half. So Lednis Diaz is taking the place of his teammate, the injured Matt Carpenter. But there's always, you know, there's wish for coach, guys to get hurt. Coaches spots, right? There would have to be, there would have to be another injury at this point, somebody who can't go. But DJ would get strong consideration. We're talking about the third leading hitter in the National League. I mean, how often does the third leading hitter in the league not go? Who's also a plus defender? with a 2-2 count. You have to love what Chad Bettis has been able to do tonight. Philadelphia Phillies came into tonight's game, one of the hottest hitting teams in baseball. Chad Bettis on a night where the ball's flying. It's 
been mixing his pitches. Great sequences. Burying the sliders, using the curveball a little bit more. Much better mix of pitches. Him and Nick Hulley have been working great tonight. And Galvis chases two outs. Looks like the Dupre Ramos will be next for Philadelphia coming out of the bullpen. It's warming up right now. That's five strikeouts for Bettis. Think about the first couple of innings, Spilly. The home run by Howard. Galvis followed with a double. There were some hard hit balls. And since that time, you know, Franco had the double and scored on the Ryan Howard kind of roller through the left side. That was not a hard hit baseball. But the hard hit contact has been reduced to almost Zippo since then. And most of the pitches with Chad, they're either hard inside. That's going to be a base hit. And that pitch was up in the zone. And Hernandez is able to beat Bettis to the spot. But for the most part, the last couple innings, and we saw it in the start of Dodger Stadium, he only got hurt two innings. Four solid innings to the Dodgers where he didn't give up a hit. When he misses middle, it gets hit hard. And he lives on the edges. And it's not about nibbling. We talk about nibbling. Chad's not a nibbler. He's a, he's a guy we talk about first pitch strikes. It's up to around 67%, but it's where the strikes are. Jimmy Paredes will pinch hit. First saw this kid when he came up with Houston a few years ago. Switch hitter with a lot of talent. To become the everyday guy that I think some people thought he'd become. Big power. Guys that have a bat waggle have some bat speed. You always found that to be true. Scott. Yeah, I really. It's it's rare that you see somebody with a quiet power. They just sits there. Moises Alou is the only one that I can ever think of. Moises Alou. People don't realize how big and strong Moises Alou was. Six three, two twenty five. Was, that was great. He, he could really hit. Love me some Moises Alou. Trouble staying healthy at the calf injuries late in his career. Boone Logan. Rockies up 6 2. Two balls and a strike on the pinch hitter Paredes. Seven-year-old from the Dominican Republic. Spent three years in Houston before moving on to the Royals, Baltimore, Toronto, and now Philadelphia. Best season was last year with Baltimore. He had 10 home runs, drove in 42. Two on Paredes. And 
ball four. So Bettis now has created a little two out traffic. Safe at second. With Herrera coming up. He's gotten Herrera three times, but this is a dangerous guy. This is a guy that. Again, he's Philadelphia's only All Star. He's hitting over 300. He has 10 home runs. And Walt wants Boone Logan to face him. The move yet, though. These are the toughest decisions for a manager. And Walt's going to make the move. He has great respect for Chad Bettis. He checked with him. But he's going to remove Bettis. Good night for Bettis. Six and two thirds. Kubota pitching performance. You know, Chad Bettis came up some hard hit balls earlier. We were discussing that, and then he settled in. And he goes fairly deep into the ball game. The move with two outs in the seventh inning. Seven hits. A walk and five strikeouts. Responsible for the two guys on. Boone Logan has been called upon to get Odubo Herrera. And I think it's the right move, setting it up for Boone Logan. Boone Logan's been fantastic against left-handers. You look at the numbers, they're great. Leads a team with inherited runners coming in and not letting many of them score. Only four have scored, and the matchups work just in, in Boone's favor. Herrera against left-handed pitching. 239 home run, 239 batting average, no home runs. And you probably, if you're Walt, may be able to use Boone if you'd like. It, it depends. I mean, you could ask him to get two more hitters in the in the eighth inning. You had Borges from the right side, then you got Cody Ashy from the left side. If he's successful getting Herrera right here. Tough out. He's hitting 370 with runners in scoring position. Good block by Hundley. Despite the fact that the Rockies have had the fireworks tonight with the two story home runs, the Reynolds home run, it's Coors Field and it's just a four run differential. Got a chase there. 
And Boone Logan's a veteran guy who's going to read a lot into that swing. You got a young kid up there who has the adrenaline flowing. And at this stage of his career, though he hits the top spot, he's not the most disciplined hitter. No, he's not. He swings at 32% of the balls outside of the strike zone. That's a that's an extremely high number. And he chases again. Percentage just went up. You do not have to throw him a strike with that slider. He's hitting just 239 left on left. Hitting 330 against righties. Third year in a Rockies uniform for Boone Logan, signed as a free agent for the New York Yankees, and this has easily been his best season. Been healthier this year for one. Here's the one two. Two and two. See a pattern? Subaru strike zone. Stay out of the strike zone with Ferreira. For the scouting reports are so good now. You go back 20, 25 years ago, you had an idea, but now every pitch is charted. And you don't even have to have an advanced scout give you some of the numbers. You can go online public online resources and it shows how guys hit. Obviously you have to take that information and use it. And he got it to chase out of the zone. Terrific job Boone Logan never did throw him anything close to a strike and Logan gets his man. The two left aboard. Good job Chad Bettis. 6 2 Colorado stretch time at Coors Field. with us for a half inning because he's doing like our man Charlie Gillespie here. We're getting his hair um, dolled up. It only takes Charlie, he says, like 10 or 15 minutes to do this, but he is all in for story time. He's voted like 10,000 times, and uh, we're working on spilling his hair as we speak. It's It'll be good. It'll look sweet pretty soon. Rockies fans, vote for Trevor Story if you haven't done it already as the National League's final vote. From your mobile device, text N5 to 89269 to cast your vote. You have to hurry. Voting ends at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Edebre Ramos. Here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Top of the order for the Rockies. And Ramos's first pitch is in there for a strike at 94 miles an hour on Blackman. Charlie's 0 for 3. I one and one Rocky six runs on nine hits in their return to Coors Field again first of four against the Phils in front of the All-Star break. 
Rockies trying to erase the memories of a very difficult trip out west one and five through Los Angeles and San Francisco. Jason Mott is warming up in the Rockies pen. It's it's amazing how quickly you can forget a road trip just by coming home and sleeping in your own bed and I know you guys had a rough travel home last night but it can quickly be erased lived it you know those West Coast games at a night game on a, as a getaway day is brutal never appreciated it I know uh, those of the Rockies players they weren't too happy about having to play a game like that just because it forces you to come home at three in the morning Book on Ramos, big fastball, 94 to 97 miles an hour. His secondary pitch is a curveball. Saw it only eight innings pitched in the major league so far. It's from Caracas, Venezuela. A lot of Venezuelans talking before the game. You had Gerardo Parra was reminiscing. There's 11 Latin Americans on the current Philadelphia Phillies roster. Struck out a little better than a hitter training pitch, which you'd expect from a guy with a big fastball. And the base hit. I thought Charlie for a second was going to get robbed again by Galvis. Tenth hit for the Rockies, leadoff man aboard in the seventh. That'll bring up DJ LeMayhew and also. Give us an opportunity to tell you that the day after every Rockies win, you get 50% off your online order at Papa John's. All you have to do is go to PapaJohns.com and utilize the promo code ROXWIN. R O X W I N. I just love that last at bat by Charlie Blackman. He's never seen Ramos before. Fouled off a couple fastballs, hadn't seen the secondary pitch. Ramos spiked two curveballs, and then Charlie was hunting fastball, knowing he'd get it again. LeMayhew tonight, two for three. He has scored two runs. DJ hit over 300 last year at 301. Came into the game third in the National League in hitting. Now the two hits tonight, he's up to 335. 335 is a big average. <sighs> you know how I feel about it. A coach with the Giants, he's not alone in what he told me. He said, We absolutely love DJ LeMayu. DJ takes off, excuse me, Charlie takes off. And he swipes second base. Ninth stolen base for Blackman. And that'll give LeMayhew a chance to either move him along or drive him in. DJ took a strike to let him run. And Charlie was trying to gauge what Ramos does. Is he a high leg guy? Is he a short stride? Quick step after he saw him lift and go home to the plate one time. Charlie realized this is a high leg kick guy. And we were talking about run expectancies. You get if you're on first base, with nobody out, you score 41 percent of the time. You steal second, jumps up nearly 20 percent to 61 percent of the time. It's about 61.4, Spilly. <laughs> but and you know when we look at these numbers and you think about the stolen base, well. I, you're seeing that stolen base numbers have dropped significantly in baseball. Just more teams are valuing outs. And if you're getting caught trying to take that extra base, even though it's a 20% bump, getting thrown out 
drops your percentages of scoring to 15 percent. I have an interesting one for you. Because what you know talking about this to me is fascinating. I know it is to you as well. Here's the O2. The, the, the old thought, it's not the old thought, it's conventional thought also, is you know what, DJ's job, hit behind the runner here, get him the third with one out. And the difference in run expectancy from a runner on second and nobody out and a runner on third and one out is only 2%. So are you better off saying, you know what, try to drive him in. Yes. No doubt, Don Baylor, there was times where I was hitting, and Don Baylor, great, I love Groove. And Groove would, would say, why are you trying to hit the ball opposite field and try to move the ball to just move the guy? You can score him with the base hit. You're a good hitter. You know what the pitcher is going to do is you probably try to throw the ball inside. So go ahead and just rip it. I, I, another one of my favorite Groove lines, and I can't remember who the hitter was. I, I, it may have been Tulowitzki early in his career. It was a guy with pop. And he, was a young, and he was a young hitter at the time. And he, he had a 3-1 count. And it was the next day, and I happened to be standing there when the conversation took place. Here's the 1-2. Hard shot, base hit past Howard. Around third, here comes Blackman. He'll score exactly what we were talking about. DJ hit behind the runner. He got the benefit of it shooting through the hole. He gets a base hit in RBI, and the Rockies now have a 7-2 lead. And that's just DJ's natural approach. I don't think he's trying to go to second base any more than that. It's just him hitting the baseball. And what makes him so unique, he can keep his hands inside. That ball's inside. He's beat with the fastball. But because he keeps the hands inside so well, the last part of the bat coming through the zone is the barrel. And it finds it so many times. And just he's able to give a quality of bat, get the job done and still drive in a run with the base hit. Well, the Rockies have hit that magic number. They have seven up on the board, so don't forget to go to your participating Taco Bell locations tomorrow between four and six to get your Rockies taco special. Lip Moss at Taco Bell. DJ's now 11 for his last 24 at the plate. So I want to finish that story. So Groove's having a conversation with, with this young hitter, and they're referencing the previous night when he had a 3-1 count, he fouled the ball off. I think he was right-handed hitter. I think it was to Lewis. Fouled the ball off on a fastball into the seats on the right side. And Groove said, 2-0-3-1, you have to get the barrel out. You cannot be tardy in an offensive count like that. Now, if a guy throws you change up or whatever, you tip sure. your cap. So, but you can't get beat on a 2-0-3-1 fastball. Now, if DJ hits one foul on the right side, it's different because DJ's That's natural swing pass is yeah, a pro is approach. Exactly. But for, for a pop guy. Like if you're Nolan and you're trying to hit the ball opposite field on a 3-1 count, you're going to yell at him. You know, hey, your job is to drive the baseball, not to move runners over. And listen, the team wants you to give a quality at bat, a team at bat. It's not being selfish to swing your best swing not being selfish if you're not trying to hit the ball opposite field. Run in, man on first, and Nolan with a foul ball to play. He's behind Ramos 0-2. And we've noticed over the last couple of weeks with Nolan, Nolan is hitting the ball opposite field a lot more often. Already had a single to right field today. Of course, he had the home run a couple days ago where he pulled it. But he's using the whole field a lot more this season than he has in previous. So DJ with the three hits tonight is now up to 337. Wilson Ramos went one for four. He's at 333. Daniel Murphy for the Nats went two for four. He's at 347. So DJ's now the second leading hitter in the National League. The Nats, by the way, are still playing, but. We 
you're looking at the Rockies and, and just on the, the road trip, it's been a really difficult road trip for the Rockies to come off of. And we're dissecting the numbers between having Charlie and DJ back to back. DJ's nearly a 400 on base percentage this year. The top two guys, Charlie and DJ, have been doing a phenomenal job at home, on the road, of getting on base. Well, DJ's hitting 292 out on the road. You don't have to apologize for that. No. This inning is evidence uh, on how important the one-two Charlie DJ punches at the top of the lineup. Give you another guy, you know, that, listen, you're going to hit well at Coors Field. We, we know that. Cargo's hitting 279 out on the road. Charlie Blackman's hitting 288 out on the road. Nolan's at 267 out on the road. Two strikes on Arnato. As I'm watching these Rockies hitters facing Ramos, it's becoming more and more evident that Ramos doesn't really have a secondary pitch that's going to be able to get these three guys out so far. So Nolan's going to continue to hunt fastball. They pitch at, and it's a wild pitch. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Yep. And that just increased the chance of scoring by 20%. Yeah, what it's got to it. <laughs> You're right, we don't get to see too many pitch outs anymore. One, two count. Not always a running count, especially when I just mentioned secondary pitch isn't there for Ramos. Hitters know that. The high leg kick, get that. Of course, he throws a great secondary pitch to Nolan, and he swings at one in the dirt. That'll bring up Cargo for three. He has scored a run. LeMayhew at second. Announced earlier, Cargo will be a part of the home run derby Monday night in San Diego. read online today MLB trade rumors John Heyman had written and then he retracted what he wrote or at least part of what he wrote that Carlos Gonzalez had had a meeting with the Rockies front office this is bounced in no man's land and it's going to be an infield hit to continue that story that, that Carlos Gonzalez had had a meeting with with members of the Rockies front office and ownership um, saying he wouldn't be adverse to a trade. And Cargo, when he heard about that today in the clubhouse, had this to say. Nothing is true because obviously I haven't talked to anybody, I haven't said that to anybody, not even my wife or my, or my kids or my mom. I mean, whenever I get home, I'm frustrated because Maybe I didn't do well, or maybe we, um, we didn't win the game, but I never complain about, you know, I want to I wanna go somewhere else. You know, we both know Cargo well, and he was your teammate, and, and you remained very close with him. And he also added off camera that he said, if that meeting took place, I must have been asleep. So sometimes these stories come out of, literally out of thin air, and, and he, did his utmost to, to bury it today in the clubhouse he and did, say that never happened. Exactly, and so did Jeff Freinich. And at the end of the day, it is the season. We know it's trade rumor time. Trade deadline is coming up at the end of July. But this is the part that bothers me is when, as journalists, and I read John Hammond, great writer. But when you're writing about a rumor without a source and without a quote, you're forcing, you're forcing players to respond to nothing. Cargo had a great day. He's named to the, the home run derby team, and he had to sit in front of his locker 
and respond to rumors that weren't even true. And, and you know this, because we were reminiscing about 2009. Uh, I know he, he originally was in the Arizona organization, hit the big leagues with Oakland, albeit briefly, and then was traded in the Matt Holiday deal. Cargo looks at himself through and through as a rocket. Yes. And look, if his name obviously is going to come up in rumors over the course of the next couple weeks. We know that, everybody knows that. But when you have when you're quoting or you're saying that this player is requesting or saying this or that without a source and without the actual direct quote, that's not fair. And it's not fair to the player. And it's not fair for us in, in, in our position as media members to have to go and ask these questions where we haven't heard it. This is from a national sports writer that is sitting in a different place that is writing this and we're the ones that have to walk up to his locker right. and ask the questions that he doesn't want to have to answer. Three and one on story. He fouls that off. And here's the thing. It is the season because the trade deadline is less than a month away and big names especially big names on teams that some people may feel like are not in it or falling out of you know the potential of going to the postseason um, could be moved. The problem that I have is that journalism the idea of journalism true journalism has been so altered through the years. It used to be you don't report something unless you had two credible sources runner going and ball four on story and now they're loaded up with one out for Mark Reynolds. And now people they pass along rumors they create rumors and there's no accountability. That's that's the disappointing thing for me and this race this notion especially in this day and age of social media to say I was first. Is anybody really first anymore? <laughs> yeah, everybody's going to have the story within a nanosecond if there's a big story to it, be told. It, it, just for me, when, when we walk into the clubhouse, the clubhouse is their sanctuary. These guys got back from a really late road trip, and to come home and you have something like this, where it feels like it's coming out of thin air, it, it's not. It's not fair. It's not fair to the media, and it's not fair to the to the players that have to deal with it. You're answering questions from somebody from the outside, saying that something that's going in-house. Mark Reynolds drives one to left center field, and it's a tweener. Two runs is scored. Trail runner story. You'll never get him. It's a three-run double from Mark Reynolds, and the Rockies have blown the top off of this one. Well, Reynolds with the opposite field home run in the second inning. Now he's going to add a double. Talking about bases loaded. 19th double this season. It's that hanging breaking ball. It's only two pitches for Ramos. Fastball, curveball. There's no secret anymore after you've seen him throw to five straight batters. Just love that quiet approach that Reynolds has now. Clear ball, Mark Reynolds. Story's got four RBIs tonight. Mark Reynolds has four RBIs. Pitching change for the Phils, 10 to Colorado.
Blown it open 10 to 2. The Saturday is Military Appreciation Day at Coors Field, and the first 10,000 fans through the gates will receive a water bottle courtesy of Jeep. Coming in to pitch now, left hander Brett Oberholzer. Didn't go real well for uh, Mr. Ramos. No, it did not. Third of an inning. He gives up. At least four runs on five hits. He's responsible for Reynolds standing at second. Brett Oberholzer. Last year he was in the Houston organization. Nick Conley's had a good day with the bat, single and a double, also a strikeout, two for three. Two and one. Over, over, her, I can't say his name right. Overholzer has three pitches. He has fastball, changeup, and curveball. Fastball about 90 to 92 miles an hour. Will occasionally cut the baseball. Will probably throw that in to right-handers. Hard hit ball to second. Cesar Hernandez throws out Huntley. Moving the third is Reynolds. And that'll bring up the barnyard, Brandon Barnes. I would say, as a whole, the Philadelphia Phillies have the most tongue twisting names. I, I just said to Doug yesterday, can they send a guy in out of the bullpen named Smith, please? <laughs> you got Hector Neris, Severino Gonzalez. Gene Mar Gomez, your former teammate. The Dubre Ramos. Ramos, who just was in there. Brett Oberholzer. This ball served to center field. RBI single for Brandon Barnes. Make it 11 2 Colorado on their 14th hit of the night. Christian Adamas is going to pinch hit. Bob McClure saying it's not easy to pitch here, Pete. <laughs> no, not if you're missing up in the zone. Overholtz here through last year against the Colorado Rockies and threw six and a third for a win. He's with the Houston Astros. Yeah, that's right, Brandon. Ramos ERA. Just got July 4th. Adama swings at the first pitch and he hits it in the air to Borges in right. That'll end the inning. The Rockies score five times. The big hit, a three run double off the bat of Mark Reynolds. 11 2 Colorado is off to the eighth in Ludo.
Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your load fare now at southwest.com. And by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo customers get your two for one club level tickets by visiting wellsfargo.com backslash Rockies. It's been a good night for the Rockies offense. About three hours ago, we discussed the fact that the Rockies needed to break out at home again after a rough road trip offensively and a rough road trip when it came to victories. They have 11 runs tonight. That's breaking out. Jason Mott will be asked to get three outs in the eighth inning. And he'll face Peter Borges, Cody Ashey, and Michael Franco. Two, three, and four in the Phil's lineup. And for Mott, Mott's been being hurt with the pitches first pitch. It's been a lot of pitches miss middle. Throwing, trying to get a sneak a cutter in occasionally with the slider. That's been getting hit. Swung on and missed. That's the good cutter. It's right on the edge. Very easily could have been a strike. See on the super strike zone. It's right there. You can tell by Mott's reaction, he wasn't too pleased about not getting that strike call. One and two. Talking about Philadelphia earlier, just five players making a million bucks or more. Ryan Howard, Carlos Ruiz, Ruiz making eight and a half. Jeremy Hellickson is making 4.2 or so. And he's pitched well lately. He's a guy that could get moved. He's a guy that will draw some interest around the trade deadline. Team's looking for another starting pitcher. I would expect that that to play out and for the Phillies they're continuing to rebuild obviously they're they're playing good baseball late this ball's well hit right center field and it's going to short hop the wall and there will be a double for Borges the second hit of the night going back to finishing on when you look at a team like the Phillies and you get a guy as a one year free agent with Jeremy Hellickson anytime you can take a player like that and bring it back several prospects there's value behind it and I know that Philadelphia Phillies were looking at something like that this offseason when you go moving forward with signing a player like Hellickson Hellickson open is a Phillies opening day starter Cody Ashey after the lead double by Borges so for three Operated offensively better out on the road. That that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Not where they play at. The joke has always been the Great American uh, or Citizens Bank, is one of the smallest ballparks in baseball. Oh. One and two. Well, they're hitting 225 at home and scoring three runs per game out on the road. 258 scoring nearly four and a half runs per game. Yeah, it's perplexing, isn't it? Really strange. Ma ahead of Ashy, one and two. Lefties have been a problem for Jason Mott. They're hitting 320. Righties hitting below 190, though. Borges from the right side just launched that double.
got it. One out. I'm going to bring up Michael Franco. So last year, Philadelphia went 63 and 99. They avoided 100 losses. They did not avoid getting the first pick in the draft. And a few weeks ago, they selected Mickey Moniak, a high school outfielder out of Carlsbad, California. People thought he was the, the best hitter in the draft, certainly the best high school hitter in the draft. There was no consensus number one pick this year. But the Bills took Moniak. He's yet to take a professional at bat. Every team has a different philosophy with how they break in kids after the draft. You know, sometimes I, going back to when Todd Helton signed out of the University of Tennessee. Clint Hurdle, one of his many great lines, said, yeah, that was the, his first season. That was the summer of four to three. His health had played the, the long year in the SEC, and they said he was so fatigued he rolled over half his at-bats, and it was a ground ball to second. So uh, Hurdle affectionately said, yep, the summer of four to three. Well, you were in that situation when, when you signed. You know, you had a long college season at UCSB. How, do you remember how you did rookie ball? Not good. Okay. It's a big change. It is a big change. And I remember the first week in, in Tri-Cities, Washington, and we start our season off in Eugene, Eugene, Oregon. Uh, and we start using the bomb bats. Bomb bats are a fake wooden bat. It's a, it's a wooden bat, but there's metal inside, so they can't, they can't break. The first week I'm using a bomb bat, I'm breaking. I'm doing great come back to try cities and I get actual wood you I used a bomb bat for the first week I didn't really? have my new wood yet that shocks oh. me, but go ahead. so I'm thinking hey this is easy I can hit with a wood bat I get all these brand new bats I break six wooden bats in less than two games and I'm going oh gosh this is gonna be this is gonna be tough it's getting expensive yeah Two and two on Franco. He's hit a home run in four straight. Was there at, at any point in time where you felt like I'm over my head? Or did you feel like, did you get there and say, okay, I may not be performing to the level I think I'm capable of, but I know I belong. I can play. There's always a moment where you feel like you're underwater. There's always a moment where you feel, there, if anyone tells you from, at every level, they knew that they were the best guy there. They're lying to you. You feel like you're underwater at some point numerous times in your journey to the major leagues. I fly ball to medium range center field. And that's the second out. Franco's retired. Single and a double tonight. No home runs. That'll bring up Cameron Ruff, who's 0 for 3. I Do you always, remember what you hit that, that rookie know, year? 230 or something like that? You hit 230 on the dot. Four home runs. You drove in 34 and 71 brutal. games. Yeah, it was brutal. That's not brutal. You know what? The, the making first, the transition, that's not brutal. Seriously. So I, I used to laugh, and people don't always believe me when I say it. I've probably been on 50 teams. I've probably been on 50 teams over the course of my life, from T-ball all the way to the major leagues. I was probably the best team on whatever team I played for, maybe 12 to 15 times. The, the best player. The best player on the team. I was probably the worst player on that team 12 to 15 times. I was somewhere in the middle majority of my career. You, where were you the, I'm not, I'm not trying to. At UCSB, you know, you, I was the worst player. Your freshman year, you freshman. felt like you were. And I, and my redshirt sophomore year, there was times where I was in. And then arguably you were the best player by the time you left your exactly. junior year though. And even on, even on some little league teams, I was awful. My first time I played T-ball, I was the worst player. I was called the Space Cookie. Well, we call you Space Cadet here in our root family, <laughs> but never the Space Cookie. Yeah, I was the Space Cookie. Cameron Rupp with a one-strike pitch, and it's now two strikes. Okay, quick trivia question, um, Space Cookie. <laughs> that may stick again, by it's the way. A great, it's a great nickname. Space Cookie. Yeah. I think that's a new Twitter handle. Name the... Name the Tri Cities. Oh, I can't. There. I can't. I just know. Uh, nope. 
I can see it in my head, but not very clearly. From Pasco, you know. Pasco, right? Washington, yeah. yep. Richland. Nope. And of course, Kennewick. Kennewick, yep. And truth be told, I only knew Pasco. <laughs> I have a I have a, a bug in my ear. There was a the Tri-City Dust Devils for one game they tried to do a different mascot. His name was Kennewick Steve. I, re I do remember that. And it was a guy in a skeleton costume. And I have no idea why. I want to say they found bones at that baseball field. Nope, not Scuba Steve. Do you remember, do you remember a guy, Spilly, as it's now two and two on Rub, two outs, Rockies up 11 2. Borges at second. Do you remember a guy named Kevin Collin in 2002? He played for Boise. Sure. Left-handed hitter, second baseman. I don't. I don't know. Do you remember him? Or are you making that up? No, I think it reminds me of. Okay. He led the Northwest League in hitting that year at 3 that right? 342. Lefty. Three and two. He had 342. This is the. This is the beauty and the agony of. Of professional baseball, which you got to live for a long time. Won a batting championship, nobody can ever take it away. Tell his kids, his grandkids, he never played above high A. Tough sport. It is tough. Three two. And this is pop foul out of play. Jim Armitrout's back with us, uh, our esteemed director. Back uh, on the headset down below, and he's from the Pacific Northwest, so he, he was the guy who cheated for me. <laughs> Where's the pass I didn't know the other two towns either. But you played there. Tri Cities, Washington, if it's a great wine country. Big time wine country. That, I didn't, did I that have something to do with you hitting 230? No, no, oh. no, no. I, w I was out of college. College kids don't drink wine. I'm not sophisticated enough. No. Another 3 2, and a strikeout of Rupp. Third time he's gone down tonight. Borges left at second. The Rockies leading 11 2, middle of eight at Coors Field. The Rockies leading 11-2. Well, the offense broke out tonight. Trevor Story in the middle of it. Nolan Arenado had a double early. Mark Reynolds, a home run. He's driven in four. Story, two home runs. Three-run shot and a solo home run. 
Charlie Blackman leading off here in the eighth inning facing Brett Oberholzer. So Story with his 20th and 21st home runs has now tied the National League record for rookie home runs prior to the All-Star break. And he's going to have maybe another at bat tonight if the Rockies get a couple guys on. And three more ball games to break it. Ground is short. Freddie Galvis, one out. If you and I were talking about earlier before Trevor Story hit two home runs when he was stuck at 19, and how Matt stares, I was asking him, hey, if Trevor Story had 24 home runs right now because Trevor's hit five balls off of the new fence that is now right in center field, said, so does he make the All Star game? Because I don't think so. I mean, 24 is a Nice number, but think about it this way, Drew. You had five more home runs, which it were legitimate home runs a year ago. Trevor Story going into All-Star break with 26 home runs. Well, you're talking about leading big big leagues in home <laughs> yeah. runs. This is what Trumbo has 26 now, right? Yeah. You, you, you got it, right? And it's not far fetched. It's not. The Mayus had a big night. Two singles, actually three singles, an RBI. He scored three runs. He's now the second leading hitter in the National League. Bounce one through the left side. Lined one to right naturally. And then spoke one past a diving Ryan Howard. That pitch is up high. Two balls and a strike. You know, on that Tri Cities team. Are we still doing this? We're still doing this because I find it fascinating. There were four guys on that team who got to the big leagues. Jeff Francis, Jeff Baker, Jeff Salas. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, there were four hitters, oh, four okay. position players who got to the big leagues. You're maybe your best friend. Doug Bernier, Jeff Salazar, myself, and Jeff Baker. Um, Bake wasn't on that team. Oh, that's right. Doug Bernier, Sean, Sean Barker. Sean Barker. Three and one. And another chance for Galvis. Coors Field is available year round for special events in most areas of the ballpark can be reserved. Call 303 Rockies for info. Continue to text for Trevor Story. Now, make the all star. What, what I wanted to point out about that team is you hit 230, you got to the big leagues. Sally, Jeff Salazar. Hit 235, got to the big leagues. Doug Bernier got to the big leagues. He hit 197. Sean Barker hit 223. On that team, there were guys, you know, who hit, you know, much oh. higher than that, not a ton. That, you know, never got to Oscar Matarano. Do you remember? Matarano, yeah. Matarano. Nine home runs, drove in 40 and 68 games. A shortstop never got there. It's down low, one ball, one strike on. Funny Nolan story Arnada. out of out of that team. So we had Joaquil Guance was a second baseman, and two years later, ended up being a different name. Scroll up. Let me see, see if I can, because his new name is there, Luis Guance. Luis Guance. It was Joaquil Guance, and then he turned into Luis. He he ended pretty, up, and he had pretty good numbers. He ended up being two years older. Jeff Francis made three starts, ten and two thirds innings. Allowed just five hits, didn't allow a run. Yeah, Boomer was great. Two and two. Darren Clark, who got to the big leagues pitching out of the pen, had a 6.98 ERA in 12 games. Chinway Sal got three games. He's still around. The Dodger organization. This ball's lined to deep left field, but it's going to be caught out there by Ashy. That'll end the eighth inning. We'll go to the ninth. Guess who's going to throw the ninth? Adam Adovino with the Rockies up by nine.
wrapped up 11 to 2. A lot because of that man, Trevor Story. Diane has sent this to us. This is Sammy the dog. He says, hashtag vote story, hashtag vote Springer. Text N5 and A5 to 89269. Hashtag story time. We're getting ready for the Toyota post game show. Jeff, home run number one for Trevor Story was? 430 feet. Corey, home run number two was? 447 feet, but it came with drink service. Because <laughs> they got out in a hurry. <laughs> we will show you both of those home runs. Don't and forget the vote. Don't we want you to vote. vote. Hashtag story time for Trevor Story as we try to get him into the All-Star game as we go to the ninth. There he is, guys. What a night. What a night. And we welcome back to Coors Field Adam Adovino. He made one appearance on the road, activated a couple of days ago. Got an out in San Francisco, and he'll be asked to get three outs here in the ninth inning. Ryan Howard will step up first. Howard getting a spot start, and he had a home run and drove in. A run in the fourth. He has both ribbies tonight for Philadelphia. And the fastball's in there for a strike. Ottavino will face Howard, Galvis, and Cesar Hernandez. And a ground ball to Mark Reynolds. He retreats, slips to Ottavino. One out. <laughs> Ottavino just threw that ball to DJ like he like it was a party favor. Hugged it up in the air. Whee! Jason Mott threw an inning in which he gave up one hit, struck out a pair. Boone Logan out of the pen got the only man that he faced. That was Odubel Herrera, struck him out. Chad Bettis on the plus side, six and two thirds, two runs, seven hits, a walk and five strikeouts tonight for Bettis. Looks to pick off his seventh victory of the year. Galvez doubled back in the second. He's one for three. Galvis's right foot is barely in the batter's box when it starts. You're allowed to do that. As long as your toes are within the batter's box and the. Well, he'll go wider than that. Watch this. Yep. So he yeah. steps Still out. Still okay. Wider. As long as your foot's on, on the chalk, you're fine. And he toe taps with that and he has a base hit up the middle. Galvis reaches, and that'll bring up Hernandez. Second baseman, number 16, Cesar Hernandez. Hernandez hitting over 400 the last 20, has a base hit in three at bats. He was robbed of a hit in the fifth inning on a terrific play by LeMay here. Mark Reynolds had a really good ball game defensively in addition to throwing out four RBIs. Four assists and he also has a couple of uh, three unassisted plays. He's had a couple of tough chances. Ninety four on that fastball Spilly that's good to see. It is good to see first pitch first fastball. I'm curious why he's shaking his head out. I know I, I've been talking to Adam Ottavino and asking him over 15 months, how do you remember your mechanics? And you go, I'm really, I'm a field guy. I just, I can tell when I get my field back. See him shaking his head. You're curious if the feel isn't quite there for him yet. First fastball of the night was 91. Now it's getting up to 94. Feel comfortable level again for Ottavino after being out for 15 months. Well, even where you set up on the rubber might not be the exact same spot that you were at before. There's that 
that slider that That's may filthy. very well have been a strike. And he throws three different types of sliders. So one with a little more velocity, one with a little more tilt, one that's more slurvy. But combination of slider and curveball. Two and two. And he got it. 96. Boy. What a piece to get back. Unbelievable. And you see, this is a cross fire fastball, and he just buries it right under Hernandez's hands. Not much the kid can do. Trying to catch up to 96 under your fist. And I'm sure there's got to be a grace period in Ottavino's mind about where he can really feel like he's cutting it loose again. Well, you got to believe he cut it loose right there. He's got to be close. Andres Blanco in the pitcher spot will be the pinch hitter with two outs. Runner moves up. Galvis to second. That is, as you know, not a stolen base. Blanco at the plate. Super utility guy. All the infield spots. Every team's got one. Oh. 95 on the outer edge, one and one. Rockies. Three games in this series prior to the All Star break. John Gray tomorrow. Tyler Anderson has been so good on Saturday night. And then Tyler Chatwood will take the Rockies into the break. So, kind of like that grouping. Here's the 1 1. Ooh. Got him. See Otto Vino trying to get back. That fastball inside misses location. That's squared up by the about calf. three feet. That hurts. Yeah, that's that sick feeling where you know you're about to get hit and you're not entirely sure where, but you know you're going to get hit. It's not a good feeling. So Adovino with two outs and now two on facing Herrera. Slider just a smidgen low, 1 and 0. Herrera tonight, 0 for 4, a couple of strikeouts. See how far he's crossfiring, and you're right. When you're in the right-handed batter's box facing a guy like this, you cannot help but pull that front shoulder out. And with as good of a slider as Ottavino has, before he's even thrown a pitch, you're you're already in a battle. It's another right-hander similar. I've never had the chance to face Ottavino, but Ernesto Frieri. San Diego Padres close games with the Anaheim Angels was another extreme crossfire type pitcher. And facing him, I had no chance. Two and two the count, two outs. Rockies up 11 2 in the ninth. And we'll 
tee up another 2 2 pitch. I'm going to guess, regardless of the outcome, Walt's probably not going to let Ottavino throw more than 20 pitches. So if this is the last batter, regardless. You have Chad Falls warming up in the bullpen. Still trying to ease Ottavino back into the major leagues and get that rhythm. Get him to control his adrenaline. And a ground ball to short. Story bobbles. They get the out. Yep. He got LeMayhew in time to tag the bag in front of Blanco, and the Rockies win it 11 2 tonight over the Philadelphia Phillies. A nice homecoming for Colorado. They needed a big offensive show. Boy, did they ever get one. And Trevor Story trying to earn his way to the All Star game. I'm sure he got a lot of votes tonight with his performance. Uh, Jimmy John's delivery of the game. Story, a three run home run early in the game to the concourse, and then in his next at bat, he had a line shot over the wall in left center field. Two long home runs. Story now has tied the National League record for most home runs by a rookie prior to the break with 21. And the Rockies explode for 11 runs on 14 hits. They win at 11 2. Chad Bettis gets the win. He's 7 and 6. And Morgan takes the loss. He is 1 and 7. Let's not forget what Mark Reynolds did a home run. He drove it 4 also tonight. Plenty to talk about. Let's get you to our post game set in center field. Here's Mark Stout, Corey Sullivan, Jeff Houston. Guys. Well, that felt better all around, didn't it? There's no place like home. There's I asked no for early like fireworks and I got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We will relive what we were rooting for and show you all the highlights from this big win. It's the Toyota Post Game Show next.